Coming up on Mountain News at 6, Kentucky schools are struggling to find school resource officers. We'll look into why that's the case. And one local nonprofit names a new CEO after the previous one had been there since the beginning. Plus, some wintry action is possible by Friday, timing out those snow showers as Mountain News at 6 starts now. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 6. House Bill 63 requires all Kentucky schools to have at least one school resource officer. It's been more than one year since the deadline put in place by the legislature for schools to find SROs, yet more than 40% of schools still do not have an SRO. Samantha Valentino takes a closer look at why Kentucky schools cannot find them. For me, it was, I felt like it was a calling. Lieutenant Tony Likens has been the SRO at Anderson County High School for seven years. I feel like when I walk up to this property, before I even get here, I'm already in that role as a, as a protector. In 2017, the district partnered with the sheriff's office to put one SRO in each of the district schools. The school system tried to do it by themselves. They can come up with the funding, but where did they get the trained officers? The sheriff tried to do it by himself. We can't afford it. But the combination of the two working together in team, as a team made it all possible. The state required all schools to do the same in 2022, but many still struggle to do so. The two things that you hear superintendents say is one, where do you get the funding? And two, how do you find the staff? According to the state, about 43% of Kentucky schools do not have an assigned school resource officer. But what does that look like? To put things into perspective, this is 1,327, the number of SROs the state needs. This is how many we have, just 758. That leaves 569 Kentucky schools without an SRO. We have one SRO right now. And it took them a year to find that one, but there are five schools in Wolf County. It's a hard feeling, you know, knowing that the applicants are not there, the funding is not there, but the need is. Districts unable to meet the requirement are required to tell the state why. Overwhelmingly, they blame funding. There's a 120-hour certification for our SROs. Ben Wilcox is the state school security marshal. He says this training involves your standard firearms and active shooter trainings, but also the mental health of students. We don't want to change in the way of ever going backwards with our training for our officers. We just continue to have to do what we're doing right now and is finding those creative funding issues, finding uh, folks that want to be in this position. Many think lawmakers should help fund SROs through new legislation. Senator Max Wise was the lead sponsor of Senate Bill 1, the School Safety and Resiliency Act. This is a budget session coming up in 2024. I'm hoping that the Kentucky General Assembly uh, continues to look at school safety uh, from an SRO perspective. In the meantime, Wise says he's proud of the way Kentucky districts have gotten creative when it comes to hiring SROs. And it's not because of me as a legislator. It's because school districts also have stepped up. Police departments have made a commitment to this. Uh, and, and I give so much credit to those that are doing this job. But working together like we do, we, we see positive outcomes. Samantha Valentino, WKYT. The 2024 legislative session begins this coming Tuesday. After several days on the run, a Southern Kentucky shooting suspect is finally in custody. Kentucky State Police say they found Donald Napier in Floyd County. He's accused of shooting a couple. The two were shot Saturday while they were driving in the Gray community. They are expected to be okay. Police say a tip led them to the arrest. He is facing two charges of assault. A man is accused of breaking into someone's Wayne County home while they were in the hospital. The sheriff's office says it happened last week on Hilltop View Road. They say a family friend went to check on the home and found Dustin Southwood inside. He claimed he was also asked to check on the home, but family told deputies that was a lie and found a pry bar sticking out of a safe. Southwood was charged with burglary. 
A Laurel County man is behind bars after police learned he was a convicted felon with a firearm. The incident happened last night about three miles from London. Deputies with the sheriff's office were dispatched to a home on O'Neill Road following a complaint. Later, police discovered 47-year-old Jason Bruner had a firearm when he told them he was going deer hunting. Bruner was taken to the Laurel County Correctional Center. Two people were involved in a crash in Wayne County yesterday. It happened at stoplight number three at the intersection of Kentucky 90 and 92. 71 year old Daniel Choate was driving a Toyota Tacoma when he collided with 28 year old Adam Matthews, who was behind the wheel of a Ford F-250. Choate was taken to the Wayne County Hospital ER for treatment of his injuries. Matthews was not seriously hurt in the crash. Pikeville will soon put to use a new service to help monitor parking in the city. WYMT's Buddy Forbes has more about the camera-centric changes. Surveillance on the streets of Pikeville may soon change the way parking is policed. Our officers work hard and, you know, they do things besides just law enforcement. The time that they spend, you know, walking around, checking to see how long somebody's parked, what could be better spent elsewhere for the community. The city just heard its second reading of an ordinance relating to plans to employ an automated camera system to monitor parking on the downtown streets. Once they park, it knows when they're, when they are, you know, still parking there two hours and one minute later or whatever, then it, it knows they violated th that space's time limit and it will, uh, it will basically go through the entire process of writing a ticket, mailing it out um, so that we can encourage people to move more frequently. The changes come after a court case in 2019 that deemed marking tires with chalk, which was originally the city's primary form of metering, unconstitutional. Ideally, we don't want anybody to ever get a ticket. We, would, we want people to do their business and, and move on to another space. The ordinance also includes a $10 increase in many of the fine costs associated with parking violations. But officials say the change is about more than charging the people. It is about changing a pattern. If people feel like that they have nowhere to park, then they're just going to go you know, on down to the Commons or Walmart, which is great for those businesses. But our downtown businesses need those customers too. Keeping the cars moving to keep the city growing. In Pikeville, Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. The 25 cameras would cover 75 parking spaces in the city, which officials say is around 50% of the public parking available. Officials hope this will encourage people who work and live downtown to use the free off-street parking areas that are not time limited keeping the other spaces open for tourism and economic development. Well, after some wet weather on Christmas Day, also on Tuesday, we are tracking some calm conditions across the region as we go into your Wednesday evening. Here's a live look across the mountains and not too bad, especially for most of the most of us. But notice in those higher elevations close to Buffalo Mountain, we are foggy, also gloomy as you go up in elevation. But for most of us, we are not too bad on this Wednesday evening. Those current temperatures in the middle to upper 40s in some areas up to 47 for Clintwood, 45 in Pikeville and 43 over in London at this hour, so those temperatures are close to average for late December and up on the radar for our region. We are tracking some drier weather, but notice back to the west, a few showers close to Paducah and that moisture will continue pushing off to the north and east, all thanks to an upper level low. So we are watching out for maybe a few showers, especially west of Highway 15 as we go into late tonight, also early on Thursday. But the bigger story, this strong upper level low producing some snow showers close to St. Louis this evening that will continue pushing into our direction. So we are tracking some wintry weather by Friday also to start the weekend. Not going to be a huge deal as temperatures are above freezing in the upper 30s and lower 40s, but some snow showers are possible as we close out 2023. Those details coming up in just a few minutes. Steve. Cameron, thank you. Governor Andy Bashir is getting ready to give his State of the Commonwealth address. Bashir will give the speech one week from today. That is a day after state lawmakers return to Frankfurt for the General Assembly session. Bashir and lawmakers will have to approve a new state budget during this session. The 2024 election season is ramping up with the first presidential primary just a few weeks away. Kentucky election leaders say that also means important deadlines for voters here. Voters who want to change their political party affiliations must do so before the end of New Year's Eve. 
You can make that change at GoVoteKY.com or in person at a county clerk's office. Kentucky primaries are closed, meaning you can only vote in party elections in which you are registered for. County clerk's offices across the state will see a big change in 2024. Starting next year, license plates will follow people, not vehicles. The new method is called plate to owner. Kentucky lawmakers actually made the change back in 2011, but clerk's offices have not had the technology to make the switch. With plate to owner, if you sell or trade a car, you keep the license plate. If you sell your vehicle, um, take your plate off, hang on to it, and then once your vehicle is titled into your name or if you're here doing that in the county clerk's office, we'll transfer this uh, old plate onto your new vehicle at that time. As part of this transition, state officials need to transfer more than 350 million records. County clerk offices statewide are closing on January 1st. They will reopen once the new system is online. That's expected to take place between four and 10 days. So some county motor vehicle offices will be closing as early as Friday as staff members train on this new online system. This means vehicle registrations, title transfers, and license plate renewals will not be available until at least January 11th, maybe later. The Warren County clerk says the current system was implemented in 1983 and an upgrade is long overdue. However, she stresses that with a brand new system, there will be a learning curve for customers and staff. A couple of new Kentucky laws will go into effect on January 1st. Senate Bill 30 creates new sections of KRS Chapter 365 to define automatic renewal, automatic renewal offer terms, clear and conspicuous, consumer and continuous service. And in Section 5 of House Bill 21, the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet will make all of the special military license plates available for motorcycles owned or leased by eligible people. A new report shows more trains are blocking Kentucky railroad crossings. The Federal Railroad Administration received 99 complaints of blocked crossings in Kentucky in the first six months of the year. From July to mid-December, the Railroad Administration received 190 complaints. Most came from Jefferson County with 126. Pulaski County was second. Kentucky has a stopped train law that specifically bans blocking public grade crossings for more than five minutes. The Foundation for Appalachian Kentucky will soon have a new Chief Executive Officer. Kristen Collins, who has been with the Foundation since 2015, will take founder Jerry Roll's place as CEO. WIMT's Chandler Wilcox sat down with Collins and Roll today to discuss the transition. Founder and CEO Jerry Roll has led the Foundation for Appalachian Kentucky since it launched more than a decade ago. Roll recently decided the younger generation was ready to take the reins. But what I really am so proud of is we have an entire team of young people running this foundation that, that get it. Leading that team is Kristen Collins. The foundation's board chose Collins as their new chief executive officer. Kristen has a lot of gifts and talent that I don't particularly have. She's a fabulous manager. She's very organized. Collins says she is nervous for the transition, but also honored to be chosen. Honored and greatly humbled in the faith and uh, belief that our board of directors and our staff has in my work. The foundation has been a big part of growth in the region. Collins wants them to continue making an impact. That has been a actually an internal question that we have been talking about is how do we continue on this growth trajectory that we've been on without burning out our staff. Collins says planning will be important. Making sure that everyone is very clear in what we need to be doing and how we need to be doing it, but then also never shying away from being innovative. That is Kristen Collins will officially start her first day as Chief Executive Officer on January 2nd and Hazard Channel Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. Founder Jerry Roll says she will serve as the founder in residence for another year as needed. Well, some chilly weather is on the way as we close out this year. Those details coming up. Plus, 
Sports gambling in Kentucky has only been going on legally for a few months, but already the amount of people calling the gambling hotline has tripled.